Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And happy New Year. Happy, happy New, New Year. Year. Now, I know how y'all don't like change. <laughs> so if you're having a problem with Sig not being in a robe this morning, that was my idea. <laughs> and if you're fixated on the fact that we don't have robes this morning, you're going to miss the message of the choir. You're going to miss Earl's great playing and whatever I have to say. So, so yeah, so, yeah, welcome, welcome. God is good. All, all the time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and all the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all ready? I love it. I love it. If you take a look at your weekly ringer, uh, and as you are looking at those things and gathering your bulletins and all that stuff, we have our connection pads there. Would you please uh, fill that out and sign up? And for those who are guests, we would love to be, have a way to say thank you uh, for, as you are here. And, and, so, and we're so glad that you, who are on the very last row, that you're joining us in worship. When I say the very last row, that's the people who are online. Okay? Those are the people online. So those in the very last row, we're so glad that you're worshiping with us as well. But if you look at the weekly ringer, many of the things that are there are going to happen not this week, but the next week. Okay? And one of the things we want to remind everybody that midweek manna is not this week on January the 4th, but it will be on January the 11th. So please make note of that. Uh, and and uh, Reverend Sheila is excited about getting that back together again, and so we're so uh, looking forward to those ministries that she has. Now, one of the great ministries that, that is a part of this church, uh, along with so many others, is what Don Freevert does at the display case. How many people recognize the display case when they come in and see all those things? All right. Uh, in a few days, that's going to be completely empty because she has nothing to put in it. I know. It breaks your heart, doesn't it? My goodness. Thank you for that sound effect. I love it. All right. So, if you have something and she would like to be able to put stuff in there on a monthly basis, if you have something that you would like to volunteer to help her out with and, and, and maybe something you have as a collection or something that you'd like to display, Please go see Dawn. Dawn, could you raise your hand for me real quick? Yeah, there's Dawn right there. You can talk with her and get it all, all set up, okay? We appreciate that so much. And the other thing that I want you to share in the Weekly Ringer, many of the wonderful ministries that this church does is displayed in pictures and little notes all the way through this. Please take note of that. It's such a wonderful, wonderful ministry. So we need to begin worship, all right? Number one is we start in togetherness of, of a call to worship. So as you are able, would you please rise for our call to worship and then remain standing for our opening hymn. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Let us open our hymnals, number 254.
Steve if he would like to lead this service and preach in this service. He said, can I do that? Can we do that without robes? And I thought, and I paused, and I thought again, and I said, but not in short sleeves for me. Don't make me wear short sleeves. Only Steve gets to do that. But I'm so excited to worship together on this first day of the year. And on the back of the order of worship, we have the prayer concerns. I want you to look at that. And our celebrations as well. We have several celebrations today. Jean and Jane Matthews in celebration of their 69th wedding anniversary. To the glory of God have uh, placed the altar flowers here. As well as Jerry and Shirley Guest in celebration of their 65th wedding anniversary. So Out in the Welcome Center, we have the flowers to the glory of God given by Larry and Carol Huntsinger in memory of Carol's son, Todd Petty. We extend sympathy to the family of uh, Christ of the Hills member Frank McCallan, who passed away this week. Services for him have been announced uh, in a couple of weeks on a Saturday morning, I think January the 14th. And so we want to lift up the Frank McCallum family in our prayers. Several others here that are mentioned in prayer, some in the hospital, many at home. We certainly want to say thank you to Earl Wild today for uh, joining us in worship. <laughs> as Ruth is unable to be with us today. So let's bow our heads now and go to the Lord in prayer and thanksgiving. Lead us to thy perfect light, O Lord. This we have sung in our opening hymn, and this is our prayer today. As we make our way through these 12 days of Christmas, we remember that we are now beginning a trek of 12 months of this year. And we pray that you would continue to lead us to that perfect light of Christ, even as this Christ candle on the wreath burns brightly since Christmas Eve, we pray that Christ's light would, would light our hearts so that we might be a light of your love and grace to those of our family, to those of our community, and to those of our world. We thank you for the opportunity we have as disciples of Christ to touch and impact lives near and far. And we pray that as we open this new year, our hearts would be determined to follow you all, more, all the more closely as uh, those who love you and those who are committed to sharing the love of Christ with all of those that we know. And so God, be with us today. Guide us by your spirit. Be with Pastor Steve as he preaches today. Our choir as they lift our hearts in song. In all things today as we worship together, glorify your son Jesus Christ in our midst. Oh. 
on, give God some glory. There are many days I'm going, I've got to follow that. <laughs> wow. Wow. Our passage of scripture comes from the book of Hebrews, the second chapter. Beginning in verse 10 and going to verse 18. And I'll be reading out of the New International Version. Here is the Holy Word of God. And bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting. God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters in the assembly, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity. So that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds in, pow in the power of death. That is the devil. And free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand for our course? <clears throat> prayer this morning. Heavenly Father and purposeful Lord, help us to trust in you in these uncertain times as we begin a new year knowing and trusting in you because you are in control. We praise your wisdom and your insight in providing us the opportunity to give to your ministries through the ministries of our church during 2022. Today, we joyously acknowledge that our spiritual blessings were evidence of your love for us. Your children, Lord, we ask that you bless these generous tithes and offerings today and may they be applied according to your plan as we glorify your holy name and endeavor to spread your saving gospel of love. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you deliver will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? And when you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? Did you know the blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again, the dumb will speak, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land? And the sleeping child you're holding is the great Did you know? Oh, Mary, did you know? invite you to pray for me while I pray with you all. Would you bow your heads with me? Almighty and gracious God, I pray that you will rescue me from me. May I be so honored to sit in the shadow of your cross as I share the message that you desire for me to share. Place in me all that I need to give your message. And Father, when it's all said and done, when it comes to the idea of glory, in that regard, O oh Lord, make me nothing and you everything. Because you are the only one worthy. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. In this period between Christmas and New Year's is one in which we begin to reminisce on the year that just passed. News magazines and television shows use collages or images to remind people of things that have taken place in the last 12 months. Images of combat, scenes of rescue workers helping victims after a storm, Nobel winners, political and religious leaders, famous people, especially those who have passed away over this last year. Faces of ordinary people who add human interest to the collages. And these collages help to define where we have been, who we 
are and gives us pause to ask where we might be headed. Often in this reflection is the idea of numbers, of stacks, of that elusive bar chart. One of the, my youngest son got caught in the Southwest problem. He needed to get back to Arizona because his not only end of the month, but end of the year, and he needed to get those numbers together. And so what we do is we look at those numbers as well. We look back over this last year and think, did the numbers add up? Did they work for you? Did we reach our goal? Did we do it financially? Did we do it emotionally? Did we do it physically? Or did we do it spiritually? Maybe it's the miles that we wanted to walk. You remember last year? Oh, I'm going to do it. And what's pushing you now is that you step on that certain hot plate that's in your house, that's in your, don't, no, hang on, not yet, not yet. <laughs> and you notice that the numbers are not going to the left, they're going to the right. Do I have a witness in the house? Amen. Not a one of you raised your hand. Maybe it's something we wanted to do on our bucket list. They all have a reference to a number. I know. My math teacher saying, ah, I told you you're going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> but depending on the numbers, does it make us move us to make a resolution? Does, is, it, is it time? Is my title of my sermon a statement or is it a question? Is it time for a resolution, or is that a question that we'll be asking? So I thought I'd give you some numbers. Now, I, I am so appreciative of Kathy, our office administrator, who helped me uh, put these numbers together, and some of the numbers are approximates. We don't have a solid number on this because we're getting as close as we possibly can, and she did a great job. Now, the first part of that, because many times we talk about numbers, we're going to say, well, give us the bad news first. And I don't think this is really bad news. It depends on how you look at it. We had eight removed from charge conference, which is a thing that we are given by the Book of Discipline. We can do that. It, it's not that we picked out eight people from the congregation and said, okay, you're no longer here. We didn't do that. Okay? Uh, but we lost contact with them. We tried to get a hold of them. They're doing something else or... Or something, we just don't have all the information. The 13 people transferred out, which we hated to see them go, but they are probably going to be with family or moving to somewhere. So that's, that's not always a, a bad thing. It's just we know the loss. And then the last part of this, we had 25 deaths in 2022. And we look at that and we go... We remember the loss. The brothers and sisters, if we could see what they're seeing now, it's not a bad thing. But we understand the loss. But then we go on to the next part of this. We had 50, 50 people join the church in 2022. Yeah. Even with me on staff, they still joined. 50 people joined. <laughs> on the, I, I could see your faces going, man, wow. You know, <laughs> Hang in there, boss. All right. <laughs> Total membership in, at, as of December 12th is 792. Our attendance went on an average from 2021 20, of 295 to 428. Yeah. Now, and that, that number is an approximate. These next couple of numbers are approximates because as much as we want you to sign those connection pads, many people don't, all right? And we understand that, but we like you to. Because the number of new visitors that we had last year, approximately 
in the gathering was 64. In the traditional service, it was 96. 96. And on the online average, those in the very back row was 199. Now, because of the genre of our church, and we even see it in the weekly ringer, <coughs> approximately the number of organizations, the number of groups, the number of people of all of our ministries who, that we helped in a mission-style atmosphere was 42. <coughs> approximately 42. I don't know about you, but I think these numbers are fairly impressive. They really are. We look at the numbers like this, and in some of us, we say, we begin to set those goals. Based on how we see this, are we going to set a new bar? Are we going to do this? Are we going to do that? It's the way to look where we've been to see who we are and where we are and to make plans of where we might be going. Is it time for a resolution? Or in your mind, you're saying, it's time for resolutions. Is it a question or is it a statement? Our passage today uses collages, if you will, uh, images, pictures, a, a painting, so to speak, to show who Jesus is and what it means to follow him. And much of this comes from Eric Kester, uh, a writer, and he helped shape this. He said there's four pictures. Each one helps to think of where we have been, where we are, and where we might be going. And so here are the pictures. Picture number one is this. Jesus as the pioneer of salvation. Verse 10. It's central to the image is that a pioneer makes a way forward for others. Jesus opens the way to God. He's the only way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way to do that. It's a vision of a better life. Hebrews even calls it glory. At the center of glory is God, the center of it all. And God in all of his majesty wants us to be in a relationship with him. Isn't that cool? The creator of the universe desires to be in a relationship with us. He does not need us, but he desires to be in a relationship with us. How awesome. How awesome. What Jesus does as a pioneer, he opens that way to life, to God. And as a pioneer, blazing that trail, so many times a pioneer suffers along the way. And our Lord suffered. Second picture, the second collage is Jesus as our brother. Verses 12 and 13. Rather than depicting us as people seeking life in a new future... It refers to those who need a place to belong in the family. Jesus is not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. Repeat that after with me. Jesus is <coughs> not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. I have family that are ashamed to call me. Okay? But not our Lord. Jesus is not ashamed. You remember those? And maybe you had. Maybe you were the younger sibling. Maybe you were the older sibling. But you know those younger siblings, and, and they want to do what you're doing, okay? They want to tag along with what you're doing. You want, they want to be a part of all of this. And you say you're going out, and pretty soon you turn around, and there is your shadow following you. To the point where the embarrassment is too much. And finally you say, just go home. And you know what that younger sibling wants to do? All they want is the acknowledgement. The acknowledgement. They want to be acknowledged. But see, that draws fear in us, doesn't it? Do we truly want to be acknowledged? Because if we're acknowledged, the scrutiny is... That we may have something that we don't want anybody to see. We want to hold that back. We want to keep that forbidden from every, everybody. None of that wants to go out, especially to the Lord who calls us brothers and sisters. But guess what, brothers and sisters? He already knows. 
He already knows. So if Jesus calls us brothers and sisters, it is not because that we are so impressive. Being called one of Jesus' siblings is an act of grace. His grace. Picture three. Jesus as a liberator. Jesus brings deliverance. Verses 14 through 16. He knows how it is with us. He too came to be like us. How he experienced hunger and grief and betrayal and loneliness and fear of death. He understands. And the weapons that Jesus had to battle all of that was the love for us. In the crucified and risen Christ, God comforts, confronts evil with love and deception with truth. And what sets us free, we seek Jesus to know that truth. That's our freedom. This is what sets us free. And the last collage is Jesus as high priest. Verses 17 through 18. This picture involves us as sinners in need of atonement. By his suffering and death, Jesus conveys the sacrificial love that restores people in a relationship with God. Through him, we are brought back into that relationship. Now, for us, of the, of the four collages, those four pictures, how many of us see us somewhere? Don't raise your hand, but I want you to think about it. How many see yourself or have seen yourself in any of these pictures? Have we not needed the pioneer to show us the way to God? Have we not needed to be part of the family, to be liberated, and need of a high priest who knows what we are going through? See, most of us, if not all, would say, yes, I'm a part of the picture. So if we look at 2023... If we look at the people that we meet on a regular basis, on an everyday basis, those complete strangers, would we not encounter in those times those people? If we ask ourselves, who are those that are in need of a future? Which ones are in need of belonging? Those who held captive by powers beyond themselves or sinners in need of atonement? And the answer is probably exactly the same. Every single one of them, whether they realize it or not. You know the one stat of all that I shared with? The one that we have a hard time putting down on paper. But the thing is, we really don't need to put it down on paper. The one stat that we don't record or recognize or put it on in a, in a Excel program is how many people do we reach for Christ? And you know why that's such an impossible number? Because of all the things that you all do every time the choir sings, every time Sig preaches, every time Kenny gets up there, when Earl or Ruth or whoever, and whenever you're doing all the mission stuff, we have no idea how many people you have reached for Christ. Just keep doing what you're doing and do it more. <coughs> do it more. The thing is, you're not doing it for one another. You're doing it to glorify God. You're doing it to glorify God. Now, some of us have that wonderful opportunity to lead somebody through that sinner's prayer. But most of us, no. That's why I gave that second picture on there. A hand extended, a selfless act, a step of faith. Will you be the one in Jesus' name? Because you never know when... Reaching one might just reach the world. It could be. For 2023, then, let's show the world who Jesus is. Let's show it. So how do we do this? We personify Christ. Be Christ-like. In all of our activities throughout the community, through our visitors, through our missions, through our activities, through our own personal life, 
We personify Christ. And see, Jesus showed us how through living according to the will of God is difficult, but it can be done. So how then are we Christ-like? And I love this quote from Picardo and Kibbe in the book Dynamite Prayer. They said, Christ-likeness in you shines not by imitation, but by inhabitation. Let the Spirit's dynamite power inhabit you completely. It's not by imitation. Because, brothers and sisters, the world doesn't need any more choir row Christians. Because they look good, don't they? <laughs> they do. They do. But I'll tell you what they do. They do. <clears throat> All right? They come in. They put their robe on. They come up. They sing for the glory of God. They go back. They put the robe away, and they walk out the way they came in, so to speak. Okay? And I'll be very honest with you. I didn't want to wear a robe. Why? Because it's hot. <laughs> but I know why we do it. I'm okay with that. But see, brothers and sisters, our church doesn't mean to be choir robe Christians. We don't need to come into church, put on those fine things, go and do what we're doing, and go back and put that robe back and walk out the same way we came in. We've got to be changed by the word of God. We've got to be changed by the power of God. We've got to be changed by the spirit of God. Not by imitation, but by inhabitation. I love this quote from Christian theology in plain language. It said, our lives are fields that are primarily contained weeds. We cannot produce strawberries. We cannot produce fruit. We can move the weeds or mow the weeds, but that effort alone will never produce acceptable fruit. If we really want that fruit, we will want, have to go deeper. We must plow up the whole field and start again with new plants. In other words, getting rid of all of that which is choking us spiritually. And letting God's Holy Spirit inhabit us. How do we do that? By Bible study, by prayer groups, by corporate worship, by private worship, by training yourself with what you entered your whole being. Let Christ inhabit you. Be filled with God's spirit. You know what my wish is for Christ of the Hills United Methodist Church? Because I prayed this prayer with the choir. And I'm dead dog serious. I'd like for us to be so filled with the Holy Spirit that if a mosquito landed us and bit us, it would fly away singing there's power in the blood. <laughs> <laughs> My prayer is that when we do what we do all the time that we do it, they don't see you. They don't see the Steves and the Marks and the Bettys and the Allens. They see Christ through you. That's not by imitation. That's by inhabitation. So the title of my sermon. Is it a question? Or is it a statement? Now I'm going to invite you to stand as you are able. I'm going to ask you to get out. Your hymnal turned to 245. And we're going to sing verses 1, 3, 4, and 5. Now hang on, hang on, hang on, y'all. <laughs> y'all as nervous as a tick on a scratch happy dog. I can see it now, my word. <laughs> but I'm going to invite you. I'm going to invite you. I know we don't normally do this. Okay, But I'm going to invite you, not come down and join the church if you want to do that. Hey, cool, that's awesome. But if you want to come down and talk this opening day of 2023 with the Lord our God, 
I'm going to invite you to the rail. As we sing this song, I'm just going to ask you to come on forward. And we're going to have prayer with you. Reverend Sig, Reverend Kenny, all of us, we're just going to gather. i got a couple of other prayer warriors right here. We'll just pray with you. And if we do have people and we're tied up choir, you just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> but I'm going to invite you to come down too if you need to. All right? Let's sing. having a good time <laughs> but I always have a good time that's all right that's all right you may not feel comfortable coming forward that's okay I will stay here as long as you need me if you want to wait around we'll pray together but as we go hear this benediction 
May God in his great glory, the light of the world, shine not with you, but also through you. Go in his grace, his peace, now and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. <laughs>